TTM. What's going on, everyone? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are in the world right now, I am so glad to be here with you. I always miss you. You're, you're a really a, a good bunch. <laughs> now, I see a couple of people here today who have been away for, for a few days, uh, for a week or so, and everyone feels really happy to kind of be back in that that CTM zone. And over the past week, well, ever since, let's just recap really quick. By the way, let me frame the session. Today is going to be a lot different than what we've experienced over the past week. We've been heavily, heavily, heavily into modeling. Before uh, before we lost 37,000, I made sure that everyone understood that we had two big technical levels ahead of us, 37,000, 35,000. And then before those broke down, because 35,000 was channel support, right? As a big technical breakdown, wanted to make sure that we had what was beneath that figured out. Really, really went hard for about uh, a week in, into modeling. Really happy with where we are as far as uh, CTM modeling is concerned, life cycle of, of technology adoption. And, you know, like I, I feel like uh, about two and a half, three hours of, of pre-session work uh, straight would go into each one of those. And I'm not sure how the flow was of, of those sessions of whether or not like that type of intensity and it within my mind and in planning everything, whether or not when we got time to, to present and share, uh, whether it was too dense and, and whatnot. And I feel like, well, today I wanted to, my, my plan for today was I wanted to, to kind of just go old school style uh, really focus on the equity markets and kind of just like look at charts and talk about them as we go. Like no planning. That's not really what happened. I've spent the last uh, couple of hours, obviously, uh, just getting lost inside rabbit holes and rabbit holes. But really, I want to just share with you where where uh, this has led me this morning. By the way, this is Jurian, uh, head of uh, Global Mackerel for Fidelity. And he's sharing this chart of Fed tightening cycles. Over here in black is the current uh, in real time. And this is where uh, the equity markets so far have peaked out. That's where he's aligning all these past tightening cycles from. 2018 is a very familiar one because it's only four years ago. This is where uh, the Fed had to flip. Yeah. And if you remember in October when we saw that the Fed was going to be hiking, first thing that we did was go look at what past uh, rate hiking cycles look like when they begin tightening. And we expected this volatility coming into around the tight of the, of the hiking cycle. By the way, that was March 16th, right? And that's where I thought, well, that there's a good chance we were putting in a bottom there. I, I thought we were on the equity markets. And then that rally got really just ripped, like hard down. And then we talked about before breaking and taking out that low, what the significance and importance would be. That's when I released like when markets crash, preparing everyone before the breakdown. Since then, we've broken down. And, you know, Jurian's just like it's a chart. He's just saying a lot of sideways turn with the occasional sharp drawdown. This is this was just massive what we've experienced over the past few weeks. Uh, and I continue to think that it's a good roadmap. Could you imagine by January 2023 that the equity markets have recovered and are trading at new all-time highs again? Now, I'm not, I, I have no idea what's going to happen. I, I sincerely don't. Uh, but at the same time, could you imagine for a moment that we are looking at January to the 23rd, January 23rd, January 2023, equity markets have recovered. Now, for whatever reason or whatever the narrative is, you know, like, you know, peak inflation picked out, but whatever it was, you know, where would that put Bitcoin? And do you think there's an there's a chance if this happens that Bitcoin is trading at fifty eight thousand dollars? The reason I pull fifty eight thousand dollars out of a hat is simply because that's what all this work last week, this model has shown. And anyway, let's keep going. Um but th this is talking about, it's also interesting in context of looking at this minus 18% where we are right now. And you can see that we are just off of that 2018 low. 
where we did see uh, the Fed pivot. We saw the, the U.S. Treasury Secretary make those calls to all the banks. And we saw the president say this is a good time to buy stocks. If you check out where that was, you could see over here in 2018 when Powell pivoted right over there. You could see that we are close to an area where we've seen Fed pivots in the past. And you could see that although that drawdown was a little bit on equity markets was a little bit higher, what, whatever we're looking at, we're looking at CDX, IG spreads. I don't know what that is, right? The most correlated to dovish Fed turns are near levels at which Fed has pivoted in the past, but inflation will likely delay their intervention uh, until even more dire levels of stress. All right. Last thing before we get started today is that, dun, 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 oh, uh, yesterday we started seeing, uh, we, we've been watching this this WAN uh, devaluation take place, and then you saw a big move up occur. You could see the, the big move up occur yesterday. What's interesting about that, and just making observations as this is something that we started watching at the very beginning, right? In the past, when you've seen counter rallies, like devaluations taking place, when you've seen these counter rally moves, here's a here's a counter rally move. Here's a counter rally move. Come back over here. Like we got a nice counter rally move over there. Counter rally move. Is this the beginning of a counter rally move? Potentially, right? This seems like it's going straight down. In the past when that has occurred, you could see here's counter trend. You could see that that has given the equity markets a chance to go ahead and rally. Here's another one. And you could see off of that that move, equity markets rallied. Go back to this one over there. Again, equity markets rally. Go back to this one over here. Again, equity markets rally. Jordan, it does not seem like the equity markets are rallying this morning. Nope, they the mar all markets right now are under under real real uh, turmoil. <laughs> For to borrow a line from CNBC, uh, distress. And, you know, uh, look, for sure, things could get disorderly. There's no question about that. But right now, you're looking at all markets, uh, NASDAQ down 3.8%, S&P 500 down 3%. You're looking at the DXY, still still strong, yields below 3 today. Uh, and cryptocurrency really getting whacked. Yeah? All right. Just an observation. That's, that's, that's my hopium. My hopium is that uh, that we see the yuan put in some type of counter trend rally, that it doesn't just go straight down, right? And that we because in the past when it's put in that counter trend rally, you have seen uh, at that point uh, risk go ahead and be able to put in in a rally, and you could see it happening yesterday. Why the yuan was appreciating, right? You saw yesterday uh, Bitcoin, uh, crypto, equity markets all rallying. Today, that's reversing, and you can see the vice versa. And that's just in real time a really good, uh, let's say, uh, indication of, of how all this is working. And just to continue our potential hypothesis that once the wand finishes devaluation, devaluating, at that point, that should be the point where risk uh, really runs up. When, when the wand finishes devaluating, that's when risk really melts up. Yeah, so coming back over here, here's again where the wand finished devaluing and risk melted up. And you could just even see on these counter trend rallies, even when the wand has a counter, if we're going to see the wand continue uh, continue to give value, even when it has those counter trend rallies, you would see uh, risk get a reprieve. Not happening today, and, and the, the wand is coming off today again. It's, you know, so now. This is going to be a very unorthodox session compared to what we've been covering, what we've been doing, but it's just where I am at today and what I want to focus in on. My desire is still to move back towards a place where I am focusing on uh, the equity markets. That's what I wanted uh, yesterday, today's session uh, to be on. I know that the, the trend lines we used coming off of uh, the March lows over here and throughout help people manage their risk. And just, well, it was really it was really beneficial and useful for a lot of people for a long time. And including, although I didn't 
pay too much attention to it as it was happening in real time. But the, the break of both this dotted trend line and trend line over here, that was the last the last lines. And then obviously that's proven to benefit as well. And I, I would like to be able to offer people uh, as much as much information as possible to help them uh, make their own decisions, including on the equity markets. And whether or not that, you know, then re the first thing I do is revert over here, Luke, uh, to the to the two day 70 over 70 period. And this actually works fantastic ever since the Great Recession, ever since 2008, uh, even on the one day this work. But it doesn't work at, at all going back over here towards the the great uh, 2020 crash and then followed by recession and that two year multi move down. That's it, it doesn't perform well at over there. I don't have a solution at this particular moment, but I want to focus on where I do have a solution and I'll be coming back to this and I, and I, and I want to, you know, get it all. But right, right here is where we have the, the, the most alpha, the greatest solution on CTM 2.0, right? Eight hour time frame. It was mentioned yesterday. Let me find a chart really quick as we, as we talk about it. It was mentioned uh, out of curiosity whether or not spending time on the 15-minute time frame uh, would make a lot of sense when you're waiting for setups to occur on the eight-hour time frame. The thing is, and, the, and this is for real, let me move this over. Like the, the thing is, is that is that the, this is quite boring, George. I've been out of the market here since April 5th. <laughs> I, I've like, you know. All right. Well, Bitcoin's down 36%. That's good. I mean, of course, that's not good. You all understand what I mean. I hope. Give me a little bit of leeway, leeway today. Um, so depower, the yuan, big drop, begins at the point in yield that China's debt is lower than the U.S. 10-year. Wow. I mean, so interesting. I, the, I viewed the, the devaluation of the yuan having to do a lot with uh, the devaluation of the Japanese yen. And just from a very simple standpoint, is so that it could remain competitive uh, in their exports. And there was talk, I, you all know that I'm a big fan of, of reading in between the lines in Zero Hedge. And there was talk before the yuan started devaluing that uh, they were going to need to. They were going to need to devalue. Yeah, a lot of those things, you know, depower. Thanks for, for that's why the hive mind is, is so great. Uh, a, a lot of those things um, together. I bring, I bring this up because I, I posted this over here today. Yeah, and I'm just showing the slope of, of 107. And this, this comment comes up and Sharish is saying, Mathematically, people see a curve down portion in the log scale and think that's the law of diminishing return. A straight line on a log scale equals exponential. Only the this part loses me. The power I, I bring it up because the, the part you're speaking here, there lo loses me. You know, and sometimes it's because I have to come back to things and spend a lot more time with them. And uh, but I bring it up. He says, only the coefficient is changing. I, I don't know what this is. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I think I'll tag Ben. ben Ben's got a, uh, a uh, uh, what does he have a PhD in, in in nuclear engineering? He might know. Not the mathematically exponential function. Uh, it's a common engineering fallacy. Yeah. And so look, I, I, my response is until the adoption curve flattens around mature, uh, mature I can't even pronounce the word. Help me out, CTM. Uh, or adoption rate changes. I imagine this continues. Agree, being a math nerd, a small x early on in the adoption curve, there is no significant difference in linear. This is interesting. Exponential or logarithmic. We have a little bit of difference between our linear and log, between 22,000 and 19,000, or even the, the sigmoid curve, S curve, Vis a V the Taylor series approximation. I want to tag back on this or, or or send them a message and find out what his opinion is on this. Anyway, I digress, but I, but I want to share and I want to share everything with you all. Let's get into it. Um, look, it's it's nice to be on the sidelines. 
it's nice to be on the sidelines and waiting, but it could be boring. Is there something I could be doing while I'm waiting for the next uh, buy signal to occur? Yeah. And, you know, is that on the 15 minute time frame? Might I be able to, uh, you know, find some action and 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 take in some profit? Look, I don't think so. I think that's detrimental. I I've, the first thing I did was go down to lower time frames and the eight hour from my, from from all the work that I've done is the most profitable time frame there is to be focused in on. Now, you could also be profitable on the daily time frame and with different settings if it helped with your quality of life and being able to make sure that you were able to follow each signal. But the work that CTM has done as far as even uh, automation through bots is it, it solves that solution and the eight hours is the most profitable. And I think that in order to be able to, to execute, we have that, that video and it shows the ocean and it talks about what your goals are and what you need to do to execute to get there. And I think that this is a distraction because I don't think that it produces. And um, so, I, look, I, I don't think so. If, if anyone is able at any point to come up with a working solution, I'm all about it. The closest I've seen to something taking place like that on, the, on, the, uh, on a small time frame was the work that we did I'm going to go ahead and just pull it up by doing um, MetaTrader. Yeah, so this work over here, right? This was this was Friday, uh, April the 1st, and we're talking about a solution using... Um, using CTM 2.0 on the one hour time frame on the US 30, NASDAQ 100, uh, one hour time frame, and all the particulars over here as well. And that's something that I would, that's on the back deck for myself that I would like to uh, put a lot, put some time into and see whether or not that's something that could be uh, like a really good addition to CTM or not, but that's worth the time. That's on a very short time frame. And there could be something there, right? But as far as the 15 minute, not that I know of, I don't think so. And I would recommend staying away there, uh, not experimenting. It's just, I don't see it um, unless I'm proven wrong. But what I do see a lot of values over here on the eight hour, and I wanna focus in on that. That's where I've been focusing on this morning. And uh, look, you all may or may not know my own particular thoughts on shorting Bitcoin. Uh, and again, there's, it's not a moral question. I don't, there's nothing morally wrong with, with shorting Bitcoin or anything like that. And, and it's, it's a discussion, whether you believe it's right or wrong that we could have together. Uh, but you know, the, the way that I see it is I don't want to short Bitcoin myself, you know, uh, and I prefer to be buy side only long side only on Bitcoin. And, and the way that we've, you know, shown how CTM 2.0 performs, it's it's all you need. Even all, even only looking at what's happened, uh, you know, even from the top, from, from the top to here, like being able just to be in the market when when we have these these buy impulses and standing aside uh, outside of it, it's it's the best thing to do. And over a long period of time, nevertheless, I do feel and I have no idea what happens from here. Maybe we do not, you know, revert back up and risk go on to make new all-time highs. Maybe we are in for something like 2000 and for like the party's just getting started on the downside. And, and really when the Fed is going to continue tightening until it breaks something, maybe it gets really messy when it breaks. And maybe they, they take it too far and that maybe it's going to take a long time to repair. There's talk always of like the lost decade that Japan experienced in its stock market and whether or not maybe stagflation is going to bring something like that along over here. And if that happens, maybe, maybe not the way I view Bitcoin is the adoption rate is a little over a hundred percent a year. I don't, you know, and, and I put it like that, you know, is that coincidence or is that causation? Because the slope is also a little over a hundred percent 
You know, do, is something going to ca cause the adoption rate of Bitcoin to fall off? If it does, that's something that would affect price. Is Bitcoin going to do Bitcoin things and decouple from the stock market if the stock market goes sideways for X amount of time and the adoption rate continues on Bitcoin? That's my base case. That's all the work that I've presented over the past week. Uh, but at the same time, if I'm wrong, I want to make sure that that we're as protected as as can be.